Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. So you can find me there and you can like and share and follow and be alerted to when I go live and have wonderful guests on the show. So I typically cover a topic relating to spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, or more. And I am delighted today to introduce to you, if you don't know him already, Harry Jim. Thanks for being here today, Harry. Good morning and aloha. Good morning and aloha. (laughs) (laughs) If if you haven't noticed the aloha theme, um, we're going to be talking about the wisdom of aloha today with Harry Jim. And Harry is a Kahuna, who also teaches healing techniques, Hawaiian healing techniques. He's been on the show before. You can look back at the archive videos on Willow White Medium, and you can type in Harry Jim or Hawaiian healing techniques, and you can look at our our past show, which was a really wonderful resource of information for people. You can also check out things on Harry Jim's website, harryjimlomilomi.com. And we're going to be focusing, as I said, on more of the healing techniques. Um, Harry has been to Lily Dell. He's been coming since 2004. He's been teaching workshops. He'll be teaching workshops for us uh, for this summer and a lot of great things that are coming in the program. So if you're wondering, when does that brochure come out? When does the catalog come out? When are the events next month? We're really looking to have that up on the website and also the catalogs ready for printing. Mm -hmm. So you can look forward to those things to come. Uh, The other thing that Harry Jim has has brought to the table is a wonderful book called The Wise Secrets of Aloha. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people have enjoyed that book and it really dives deep into the Hawaiian healing understanding. So you can check out his book and find more information about that on his website as well. Um, Before we get into our discussion, I just have a few announcements to make. Uh, Lilydale is in the news. Not only are we um, now joined the National Registry of Historic Sites, uh, we're we're moving forward with those things, but because we had a a wonderful program called the Spirit Rooms of Lilydale, this is going to be on Channel 7 uh, this Friday, March 11th at 7.30 p.m. on Channel 7. Uh, Buffalo. You can watch Spirit Rooms of Lilydale. It's featured. It's part of Women's History Month of programming. So I encourage you all to take a look at that. And uh, oh, before I forget, if you're interested in my circles, I will be starting up a new uh, circle series this coming Monday. So March 7th, you can register for that on my website. It's a five week circle series and we go into the experience of connecting with spirit. We get some practice. It's one of the best ways to develop mediumship. So without further ado, we'll get into our topic today, which is Wise Secrets of Aloha with Harry Jim. (laughs) Let's give them a basis of of what that means. You know, everybody wants to, Remember what when someone asks, what is that really? What is that Ho'oponopono? We'll start there. What is Ho'oponopono? And there are a lot of different interpretations, I'm sure, but the collective, the total collective is, is about, excuse me, is um okay, so I'm gonna say it here. Love prevails all trauma. Mm. So that if you look at all as the totality of the body of knowledge and love that Ho'oponopono offers, it will be about how love has prevailed all trauma. So like what a big statement, what a big breath. You know, it's galaxy wide. (laughs) That's the generosity of Allah and, and the Hawaiian people in that. We're not saying, you know, that love um, prevents trauma. It simply prevails trauma. And we Hawaiians have been doing that for 10,000 years, and a bunch of us have continuously collected the tricks that work. Nowadays, they're called hacks. <laughs> Everybody likes a good hack. I mean, yeah, a good the, hack. The understanding of how to maybe uh, take the leap 
a little bit more safely or easily uh -huh. or quickly uh, uh -huh. in our spiritual development. Yeah, we're looking for feathers in our nest or power in our being. And we're looking to jump out of excuses into progress because we kind of know that it's either excuses or progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. The whole point <laughs> gives you a balancing mechanism. Yeah. And basically, I, you know, I've learned hundreds of different techniques, but um, basically all of them have one thing in common. They're the request for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to say it with you. Help. Help. Yeah. Did you notice we didn't aim that intention? That's Ho'oponopono. There's complete trust and you don't know what's going on anyway. <laughs> so you know, that I let's lean into that. That other okay. saying that you don't ask for something specific with that help. You let the divine, the source of all, direct that help for you. Yes. Yeah. And the rationale, of course, is that should you be able to nerd yourself into a corner and find out what it could be, it's probably changed. <laughs> right. Because our perception changes with time. And as we go through the experiences, we start to see where there was a blessing that something didn't happen. Yeah, the, the, the observational skill is where Ho'oponopono is at its core, where we take out the personal uh, control of energy exchange and simply observe the authority of time, love, mm -hmm. and notice how that really steers away from stagnation, grief, and excuses. And excuses. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can, because we can use those things as excuses that, in that list even, mm -hmm. of why we can't move forward or why we're not perceiving something at a, at a given mm -hmm. time. I think the first thing I always have to offer is the common truth that um, I don't care if you only speak in Africa and only speak in Chinese. You're still speaking from your heart and we're all hearing you. Mm -hmm. And, and what well, I'm saying... <sighs> Ah, that the power of observation is a real um, throne in your heart. Mm, I love that phrase. Yeah, because you sit in complete comfort of the divine's authority to run the ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't a dependence, though. Yeah, because it, it, it requiring us in Ho'oponopono to be completely vulnerable to being present. Mm -hmm. You see, the hum the, in Ho'oponopono, the human condition is to literally convert negative energy into positive energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you do that? Well, right, first of all, you do it from uh, observation. Mm -hmm. Can we observe that you are probably a real true hybrid of your family from now to the beginning of time. Can you even begin to appreciate the possibility that like it wasn't supposed to happen? It must have been love that prevailed because, oh my God, nothing else did mm -hmm. except that heartbeat you got. And then again for your children and then again for their children. That, that truth is what we Hawaiians value as a cherished truth, that um, whether you have a, a body or a spirit, you're still in the family. And we cycle on the same canoe to progress truth forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we do know that the, the weights, the, the grief of the human experience is, so. yeah, that's the word we're gonna get into, it. it's called forgiveness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's only two kinds. Now or later. Mm -hmm. And it's better if you do it now in many ways, but sometimes you have to wait till the right time within a you do, but after now happens, you realize that the right time is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
because we see our evolution and the observation of divinity is to see our love. It's a big difference. It's like recently we've just come to understand that you, you really can't see a politician or a friend or anybody with the face and trust that. You really got to look into their heart to be clear. Yes. You can yeah. look into their heart and, and speak to their soul, to that place within them yeah. that it resides, yeah. that divine spark. That's Ho'oponopono, mm -hmm. to make right the best and to undo what is not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is your authority as an experience of the divine. Because we're here, you know, there's, there, there's squirrels to pick up the nuts here. There's giraffes to get the high leaves. There's, there's bugs to eat up what's left. And for humans, there's one thing we got to do here is to convert negative energy into positive energy. Not only for the service to the planet, but also because our soul needs to learn how to do that so it can keep and continue to keep holding light as cherished and expanded. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. Light as cherished and expanded. cherished and expanded. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm speaking in this language, and many Hawaiians are listening, going like, we don't talk like that. I, I really appreciate that truth because what they talk about, and that's what I want to share today, is what they want to talk about is how their Palladian origin is so valuable to them to know that they're not origin of this planet, but they did come with a mission. Mm. And their mission is Ho'oponopono or to Pono, to bring to the truth that you here represent the possibility that heaven can arrive on earth. Not by construct, but by vibrational love. Mm -hmm. And when we say aloha, that's what we mean. Aloha means to us, the breath of God is in our presence. That because we acknowledge that, we have a divine authority to be happy. <laughs> it's, that, it's that understanding of the pursuit of happiness is already here. Because the pursuit of happiness is the presence of the experience of the human condition. Mm -hmm. It isn't something to be achieved. You know, it's really important, you know, we do have the time. It's really important to just come through the sketching idea of Adam and Eve or your creative story. And everybody knows that story. And us, Ku and Hina, the creators of our experiences, the creative couple, they arrived on a, uh, to the earth and manifested themselves on a particular island, uh, on a particular mountain on the island of Kauai. And that mountain is Mount Kalihi. That means the Ali, the king. And when they came to planet Earth, the couple noticed something about planet Earth. That all the animals and then all the trees and all the rocks and all the plants and all that was there, all acknowledged and recognized that this is heaven. And Earth humans did not get it. <laughs> They didn't get that they were already in the place of Aloha. Mm -hmm. So they determined to go out onto the planet and continue multiplying until everybody heard this word Aloha. Until wherever they came from, people would know Aloha. So for Hawaiians out there listening to this experience, whether you're in blood, in body, or in spirit, you get excited when you hear that McDonald's is now an aloha shape. You get excited when, when yoga people all over the planet go like aloha to you when they begin their session, when they see it in a road sign, when they feel it from a person who recognizes their color. Yeah. We know that when we decided to come from the Pleiades constellation to planet Earth, Lake Maria, and then now Hawaii, to reoccur our genealogy so that we could sound this truth. That is when 
we know we're here for purpose, peace, and Ohana family. Mm-hmm. So all these different tentacles or satellites of the concept of Ho'oponopono coming through so many different kinds of leaders in the Hawaiian nation and in the world are all doing it from the single DNA trigger that says, oh yeah, I remember, I'm here to deliver the message. We can turn negative to positive. And if you're looking for how that's done, get a hug from a Hawaiian. (laughs) Well, we we do judge people on their hugs, don't we? (laughs) We feel people on our hugs and we convert it into a fear or a love. Sure. But when you hug, like you really mean it. Mm. When you really feel the essence of the deep abiding cherished feeling of love mm-hmm. then you've got it yeah. then you've got it yeah. and you've gotten contagious because it will emanate mm-hmm. yeah we all want really really get the 100 monkey theory especially in Ho'oponopono now, I'm not sure if you know that, but I know most people in the world have heard of it before, where uh, very simply, a bunch of scientists went to a, a tribe of monkeys in Taiwan, and they watched the monkeys um, kind of, uh, they introduced the idea of washing, because all the monkeys went to wash their food, I mean, we were just eating nuts, and then this particular group of monkeys was washing the nuts. And then besides that, all the people who were watching them wash the nuts got angry at them because that minority was. And so there was more ruckus. But before you know it, there was like a building of that community. And all of a sudden, there was over 100 of them. And the next day, everybody was washing their nuts. (laughs) That's how it is with Hawaii. Yes. But then I've also heard that, that if you extrapolate that, that there are other monkey groups that started doing that, but hadn't had direct connection in, in the physical sense of watching that oh, happen. Well, that's a but deep, that happened like group. another, a whole nother region of the world. Of the world. That, that there's a deeper consciousness that Absolutely. when one group ascends in their understanding, their knowledge, another yeah. group may just sort of synchronistically and embody those truths and that energy as well i want to share that experience in the real human experience you know there was a man i was very close to and even more close to as he's not in his body his name is israel kamika vaiori he he wrote that i mean he didn't write it but he did sing that song um, over the rainbow And, and he really did introduce the consciousness of that collective to the Hawaiian people. What was so fascinating for me is 15 years later after he passed, I was uh, in conversation with many uh, Germans at the time. And that song was number one for six weeks in all of Germany. It's one of my favorite songs. Yeah. It's, and it's it my com- favorite version. Of completely Germany. conveyed our voice yeah Yeah. and it is timeless Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah Yeah. so hawaiians really uh, are grateful that's a very big piece and i can say that as they uh showed me how gratitude is um the only safe place Because, you know, we went from 600,000 down to 40,000. Wow. Yeah. And so we really understand that only 1% survive. But to that end, um, you know, when my father was born, there were about 75,000 Hawaiians. When I was born, there were about 250. When my son was born, 250,000. When my son was born, I think it's 1991, we hit 4.6 million. 
part koan is. So, love prevails, all trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important uh, component of the Hawaiian healing understanding, the, the, the secrets and the wisdom of it, that beyond all of the, the karmic entanglement or the trauma of something, that you can enter into a state of grace. So as spiritualists, we would say, to some extent, that the law of grace transcends the law of karma. Mm -hmm. And moves you into a greater understanding of that creative reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we have that uh, ability to be a force, but also be in the river of that divine consciousness. And that when we step into that river and are, are allowing ourselves to be in the flow of that, we ultimately experience um, tastes of the perfection of the divine mm -hmm. remembrance mm -hmm. of it. And we can taste that again and again. And in our consciousness, it's about noticing that when we are in our presence, in when our soul comes to visit, mm -hmm. we are walking in two worlds. Not only in this world, but in vertical time where all worlds meet with all of us. Yeah. And in that visit comes the absolute sweetness of having human heartbeat and divine love on planet earth mm -hmm. yeah i'm looking for the hundred monkey because i think we can turn this whole rock into a place to love and visit all the time that's right turn this rock around <laughs> <laughs> The tool we all have and we haven't really identified, it's a nice time to say that right now, we're using this tool Hawaiians have, believe me, really worked with and perfected, I believe. It's called levity. Yes. Yes. Yes, it, it's, a, it's a component of entering into that, that lonely, lonely state, state mm -hmm. of being. It's a, it's a sacred joy. It's a sacred experience. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the, the, <laughs> the use of levity and laughter and the breath, those yeah. are all moments to catch your breath, but also re a reminder not to take anything too, too seriously. Yeah. And also to appreciate that the, the benefit of levity is to come to a place when you're working with someone trying to heal them in the Hawaiian culture, you really walk through the possibility that your healing capacity is in your athletic capacity, in your ability to be present, to move, because it's that capacity that owns your confidence. Because as soon as you generate the confidence it takes to support and hold energy for another person, Hawaiians totally understand. All the molecules start listening to you as if you had orders from who really counts, people who love. And things and realities change according to the river of that because you there are now in that place where we call walking in vertical time and horizontal time, very critical piece. Mm -hmm. But it's not all serious and nerdy. Let me give you a perfect example. I'm so excited to do this of what that can feel like to uh, living on uh, earth as in heaven is that idea, you know, when I was 13 years old, 13, and, and my dad took me to Wailoa River, River Mouth, and Wailoa Bay, and he bought myself, he bought me a $10 gunner, which is an old surfboard. It was cheap because it was beat up. But he said, get out there and go get it done. So, I got a chance to surf good two foot waves. And for the first time I was able to stand up. It was about a half hour try. And when I stood up and just let the wave ride and found the balance, it was truly one of the first times in my life I felt Hawaiian because I was absolutely vertical with whatever downloads was coming in with the wind, the water, the air, the sun. And I was also horizontal moving across the plane. And I felt. Mm -hmm. Aloha. Mm -hmm. 
because you you were so in the moment of the now. Yeah, it's as if time stands still. In time moments. stands still and open to the meeting of me and my soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's an intersection. Yeah, that occurs in those moments. For Westerners, often that comes by route, doing the same thing over. So that's why Hawaiians try to teach a rote experience, mm -hmm. something to bring them a balance. Mm -hmm. For many Hawaiians, cleaning is another uh, rotation. Right. So they'll talk about a broom clearing their room, even if they're just all they're doing is clearing that, clearing that, mm -hmm. or they're using their breath to blow clear. But they are engaging their attention energy. Mm -hmm to clean. That's what Ho'oponopono really is. Because um, Hawaiians know this, you know, you never get what you want. You get what you pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if they pay attention to cleaning, there's an understanding of this need to clean. Oh, yeah. But there's also the understanding that it, it is clean, it is being cleared at that very moment. Just in oh, the it, yeah, this is the other kind of paradox I'm going to talk about. And it's yeah. nice to just introduce them. The paradox here is that when you give your attention, right, mm -hmm. it, it is actually the flow of the divine. Mm -hmm. So the manifestation is not your creation. You are the creation of the manifestation. You're part of that realm. And in that comes your capacity to be with your soul. Mm -hmm. In other words, the dance of visiting with your soul is in the dance of preparing, clearing, presenting, mm -hmm. be prepared. Right. Yeah. And honoring of the space and the moment. And the moment so that the moment continues forever. See, because we really, really, what you know, you don't talk about. What you believe, everybody talks about. That's a great distinction. Yeah. What you know is beyond the box of what you can say. Which you know is beyond the capacity of the human language, particularly English. <laughs> no offense to the English speakers. Not at all, English. because it's a powerful, <laughs> it's a powerful language for contractual understandings. Sure. But to convey the love of Allah, I mean, we have thousands of words that convey love. But don't ask us to, you know, build a computer. That's not our game. You can't do that in Hawaiian. You cannot do that in Hawaiian. It does not compute. It does not matter. <laughs> it it doesn't obsolete... matter. It's, no. it's sun waves. <laughs> no. It's obsolete. <laughs> yeah. We do chase through athletic experience, spiritual uh, fulfillment. So for most Hawaiian, Healing is an athletic experience mm -hmm. because the nurture and power of confidence can get molecules to convert from negative to positive. Happens all the time. So let's talk about this athletic experience. Okay. Are you, are you saying about the surfing and hula dancing? Or what do you, what do you mean when you say athletic experience? Are what I'm saying is that often breathing? in energy work and healing work, the, uh, the mental experience of holding a space yes. is a mental experience. The athletic experience of Hawaiian is to continue the breath during the experience, to hold the breath as an athletic tool yes. to raise your confidence, because confidence is in the amount of breath you have, not how you think about it. There we go. Yeah. The word I'm using is kina oli, to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing for the first time, for the right person, the first time. And what that means is when you are in the preparation, you are calling your soul to show up 
at the right time, at the right place, for the right moment, because you're willing to join in love, a manifestation will convert negative energy on planet Earth into a positive experience by actual tool. Here's the example I like to use all the time, and it's worth a minute. It's like, you know, when you're 300 years ago and some captain of a canoe big enough to go to Tahiti comes to you because you're the guy who knows how to kahuna or to manipulate the light of rope, mm. okay? Because there are different specialties. That's what kahuna really means, yeah. different specialties. So the man says, I, I take the responsibility. You know, it's gonna take him about 18 months, eight hours a day, every single day, and by candlelight, four hours. What he's gonna do is first take a pile of coconuts, go make that pile of coconuts and take out the husk and bring the husk and pull out the inside and then put it on his knee and rub until he gets one strand. And when he gets a strand about a football length, he'll make three others. So he can have three to four strand weight, but he won't stop. That's just the first mile. And there won't be a single, single, separation in each piece because that rope has got to hold the mass from hawaii to tahiti so that guy's going to do that now according to his authority in complete kinoli he will make each moment the right time at the right place for the right reason for the right purpose he will hold that consciousness mm. so that when he hands it over to the captain to put on the mask he will walk away from that thing going like that is Kinoli. Mm. Mm. This is the same focus that they have taught me as a healer, being Hawaiian, giving the service. That each moment I present must be in that moment of Kinoli, because that mass is going to sail into the future mm -hmm. with my Kinoli. And you want and, it to hold. And all of those men who have had to hold that space to get me to where I am at. Mm -hmm. We hold that space. And, and when we have that, um, it's very fulfilling. I, I love the visual and of the imagery of that and the feeling that that tactile representation of, of the weaving of energy that occurs when you're deep into the healing that you can feel how all of those like the prayer of being the embodiment of prayer is present in the building and the weaving and the capacity to understand that the actual human personal earth-like strength can cut through trauma yes that at and the core of our very being at the very we... core of us mm -hmm. very simple exercise to really find a place in your mind to place this kind of story is to realize that okay you know your finger if in your mind you think pointing upwards above you that first you get the moon, then Mars, then the solar system, then the universe. It keeps going forever and ever and ever that you can keep going towards some form of light as you go out. Now, I wanna ask you to do me, take that finger and point straight to your heart. And because that represents a frequency that has and will last forever, that that is the discovery of the human condition is to ever follow the light of your own heart because that will take you just as deep. There is no closure to the depth of it. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's who your soul is. And these arts we offer is just to go play with the fun people. <laughs> <laughs> the fun people. <laughs> but there's the concept of the infinitely in, inward and infinitely outward that is occurring simultaneously Absolutely. And like that intersection of time the intersection of energy mm -hmm. as we weave all of that together 
And at the same time, like you said, that ingredient of levity mm -hmm. that is, is in that, the sacred joy shows up and is present, even in the difficult moments. And that, um, yeah, and that is embrace the paradox, mm -hmm. that very power to like make things a future. So it, it's triggering a thought in me, you know, sometimes when your people are in a serious situation and all of a sudden they feel giggly and they feel like laughter wants to bust right out of them. Do you feel on some level that that is uh, an energetic relationship of, of, you know, handling that which is difficult or traumatic or serious in that moment? I want to just make a fun joke about that. Okay. Have you ever been out with four or five people and we all order wine? So halfway through the wine, three of us are completely zonked. <laughs> <laughs> the other half is like waiting to the end of the class and by about four hours later, somebody got drunk. But they don't all, we don't all process the power of happiness through divine intervention or engagement. Mm -hmm. all in the same pattern at all mm -hmm. that the fluidity of the spirit in the body gives us a momentarily connectability to other so in other words to make it really simple when i teach lomi lomi which is a touch technique of healing i really make sure that i say this laughingly but very seriously uh, to heal hawaiian is to be 100 percent entertainment and God 1%, meaning <laughs> there is a moment that the divines will walk in and, and be with the two of you. Everything else was preparation, so make it fun, especially when you're dealing with the uh, power of the human body, because we chose these bodies. Whoever figured out that we chose these bodies because of our choice of travel and entertainment, <laughs> we chose these bodies for a reason we, we chose our parents our families our, our situations for the lessons associated with them and for travel like and said, entertainment <laughs> well i don't think that everyone's life is just one big reality tv show necessarily no, but i do I believe that your that choice of entertainment moment. Yeah, I, I do believe that you're, see, the point of hilarity is to really appreciate that whether you learn to rise the raise or lower, you're, raised, you're learning to maneuver. And that's the gig on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So don't be so, like, we all, we, I, I like to say this to people, don't be so all committed. We all have to have wings before we leave. Some of them are, some of us are taking pitchforks. That is the choice. <laughs> and we will live through the truth of trauma will win mm -hmm. yeah wow <laughs> you just said but you just said the something interesting you said trauma will win yes we will overwhelm i mean excuse me prevail uh, uh. love will prevail will overwhelmingly prevail all these traumas there we go Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Because I'm thinking of, can we sit for just a second and really look at all of our family's history and just be amazed that we're still here? Yeah, that's incredible. It is. And we're not alone. That is so silly. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. When you are in the bottom of a 10 foot ocean, the size of the Pacific, and there is a lobster in the middle of this rock and you got to poke at it and you see a shark, yeah? And you tell your uh, Amakua, your family, can you please get the shark out of here, right? <laughs> and you see the dolphin jump in front of you and you get the lobster, you are living happy. <laughs> <laughs> you're living happy you're living high on the lobster <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time right but it does happen to prevail so that's interesting you're like and then there's a shark and then there's a dolphin and then there's all this other stuff that we could be distracted 
by the fear or by something that is animated next to us, but we need to stay focused on the lobster. Absolutely. Because we only get what we pay attention to, not what we want. Right. Oh, and I forgot the 10 foot wave too. So there's a 10 foot wave, there's a shark and there's the dolphin. Have you ever noticed that when we get together in the trauma, we, we want it to go away, but nobody's paying attention to picking it up and putting it in the trash. We keep wanting it to go away. Now this we're is not good. actually we're not actually picking okay. up the pudding, you know. Mm. We we just want it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, uh, it's all good, but it's just really interesting you say that because people really wallow in that trash can. It's almost like they go dumpster diving. Because that's the only tactile memory. Yeah. And when we step at observation, we actually see us wanting to connect with things of past by wanting to touch things of past, which is what trash is. Mm -hmm. Take a breath. Because <sighs> <laughs> it is that idea that when you hold your breath in, the trash is also held in. Mm -hmm. And when you do the divine Hawaiian breath, which is <sighs> the trash is left. Not the trash in terms of things that are bad, things that are being converted into positive energy. I gotta tell you, if we were just half as grateful as trees were to us, as we were to trees, we'd understand that the trees need us to breathe bad air. We'd understand that. We'd really feel that truth. And as we begin to you know, move into this time of uh, new catastrophes, neo-catastrophes, <sighs> <laughs> it'd be great to know that you you don't have to have a a, a a boat flipping and flopping in the water you can have stability by true breath mm -hmm. so when the when the trash surfaces yep. that's your opportunity to acknowledge it but to clean it clear it because that's yep. a key component of understanding hawaiian healing and the energetics of that but then also that breath that clear it energetically from you. It's a purposeful moment to say, I am this connection with the divine, this breath. Yeah. And that See, I am prevailing over the yeah. trauma crash. This is an important point at this time of the conversation is to really point out that there are two cultures from 10,000 years ago to now that have never written anything. That's the Hawaiian and the Tibetan. And, and both of them use the technique of meditation to come to center. But basically what Hawaiians have learned is center in meditation is actual uh, levity of laughter. Okay. Because when you are laughing, two things are happening. Your oxygen is increasing, first truth. Mm -hmm. Second truth, you're thinking of nothing. Now, when Hawaiians say erase, erase, which is a technique that's taught, they're thinking of the center of the laughter mm. where there's nothing. And that will always end up in the issue at the point of collapse where people have already processed that their conflict is a joke and people start laughing in the room. They can't come to that same agreement. It's like asking them, are you guys all drunk at the same time? No, we, we drank at the same time, but we're having different processes going on. But mm -hmm. definitely, we're not who we were. It's when you can laugh about it. And usually that's later that happens. And when you decide to laugh with the full breath, meaning, yeah, I can't have the mood to laugh, but I do know that if I take my full life, <sighs> and go to the bottom of that breath, mm -hmm. I will find the person that's me, that's willing to not be alone. And then you will laugh, mm -hmm. but not the laugh of, 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 of a joke, but the laughter from a relief of pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. So there's more than one, yeah. I'm glad you really got in there on that one. People are going to appreciate the depth of that. Yes, because um, this COVID experience has taken us to that place. Mm -hmm. Especially about breath. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and do you find it also that as a a Lomi Lomi practitioner and teacher that that when you breathe, you remind it, it helps other people to remember to breathe. But as you're breathing, you can feel almost as if the waves of that energy are altering. Totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, really appreciate that the mechanism of our mind is to convert uh, symbols into manageable information. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the breath is to convert net breath, grief into joy. Mm -hmm. So when you start athletically raising your focus on that image, that truth, by, you know, being in that, I want to be here. That's all you have to do is want intent. The molecules around you literally decide to go your way. They literally tune in and go like, okay, what can be evidence of this moving in the form of the divine intent? Grow and be well, be well and teach well. I mean, that's my thing. Grow and be well, be well and teach well. That's all I have to do. That's all I have to do. And the, and the, and it makes uh, the other things a bit more effortless. Because you um, have your why and yeah. your, you have your stability of focus. Which means that there is a channel of connection between where I am and where I am, not where I want to be. Meaning where I'm at on purpose in body and where I'm at in my spiritual path of trusting a dependence on my soul's engagement on this planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's possible because I'm not the only one. I'm just the one talking right now. <laughs> you get the stage for sure. Yes. But okay, say that for us again, that dependence. Um, A trusting mm -hmm. in that dependence, dependence of your soul's engagement. Of your soul's engagement. On this planet, mm -hmm. through your experience. Tactfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust is such an important ingredient in all of this. Ho'oponopono offers trust skills. Yeah. It is a skill. It is not uh, a divine, it's not a it's not a commodity. People who practice Ho'oponopono are much better at it over time. Sure. Trust is like that. Mm -hmm. For most, it's going to be a learned experience. Oh, absolutely. Especially if their trauma is that they haven't been able to trust themselves or other people. And so there, the trust is a very key word, I think, for a lot of people in their lives. It comes up so much, right? Absolutely. And so to clear that, it's almost as if you have to be willing to jump off the cliff and know that you're going to be supported by the safety net of the universe. It is like that. The, 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 the direct contact idea I try to express is that as soon as you really connect it, you know you're not alone. Mm -hmm that even though people's trust challenges have always made you feel alone, that there is not much difference between your power to trust and your power to keep company. And, so and they're not necessarily immediate, but they will 
grow at the same time. Do you feel that that's where the gap is? That that for for people in terms of their own healing, uh, trusting that healing will occur is a component of that. That there's a bit of a gap, and that they're having to bring that fissure of thinking and fill it, fill that void with that trust in the divine, that dependence, as you said before. A little simpler than that. What I'm trying to get you to understand, or at least the audience that's participating in this conversation, is to really realize that as soon as you take a full deep breath and keep deeping and focusing on that truth of the breath, you come to the truth that the thing that you didn't trust wasn't something outside of you, was something actually inside of you. And the skill of trust is to make your truth at the top of your breath. Because anytime you look at a a failure or success at the bottom or without breath, it is distorted. Mm -hmm. So that whether you invest in people to trust or invest in people not to trust, it's still a distorted decision. When your breath is in full confidence, so mm -hmm. is your boundaries. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, when you have the capacity to extend trust, you offer the world generosity which is a remarkable announcement that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that will attract the molecules that will continue to look for a way to serve light. Mm -hmm. So really it is about giving up the belief that someone has made you feel alone and really start working on how that bullshit's got to go. I got to get this engagement with what I'm feeling mm -hmm. and not what I'm responding to. There we go. Yeah. 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 So again, that's top of the breath. And yeah. you talked about the bottom of, of the breath being that center. Yeah. That center of the absolute the pendulum place where the pendulum comes to the moment of actually stopping. Breath up, mm -hmm. breath up, breath up, breath down. At the very bottom is the point, the pinnacle point of where your spirit and your body collide. Mm -hmm. And the breath up is a convoluence. Mm -hmm. And then a release, meeting again and up, a confluence. Both the spirit of the mind and the spirit of the body meet. On that. This is something that's really cherished to me because I'm a kayaker. So I find center of all activity from that place. Mm -hmm. So I do take it personally that I don't take anything personal. Because the observation of how I change is very real to me. That I can be in a really bad mood without enough air and I can be in a really positive constructive mood when I have to let it put myself in the place of being prepared with enough air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Beautiful. It is. Oh, I, I love that. You've given us so many great deep understandings and the visuals, I think, assist and the words assist mm -hmm. in helping people come to a greater understanding of this but it's something as you said it, it takes time mm -hmm. to assimilate and weave together with that information mm -hmm. and there's the taking it out of theory and putting it into practice i just want to add one one lady i dearly respected doris cannon i've done much of her her videos and you know she says we come here so that we learn to maneuver and work with energy Mm -hmm. But she also said that once you get that done, you can do anything. Well, I'm here to suggest that Hawaiians have committed to that. They were in a place before, in the Pleiades, where they were able to maneuver energy. And they decided what they would do is do anything. And anything means go spread the word. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. spread the word. Go tell everybody you can do this. Every, every corner of the world. <laughs> yeah. And that is what Hawaiians are trying to 
be generous with. Mm -hmm. I'm just one form. There are many. Happy to say we all love you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, this has been so great. I know that that um, we should probably sum it up or any last thoughts that you wanted to share with folks today because the time's blown by. <laughs> it has completely. I want you to have a better day. <laughs> Everybody have a better day. Have a better day because you spend time with this joy we're sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if the word aloha comes to you, share it. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harry. This has been wonderful. I think people really enjoyed your sharings today. I can just feel it. And mm -hmm. I know they'll probably tell us in the comments and all that good stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of you that, that watch this later, please know that all of this information, it just, it still applies wherever you are on the journey of your life. Uh, whether you feel that you've had the shipwreck and you're in recovery of that, or if you've gotten up and you're surfing away, however that is in your life, you can have the responsiveness of this energetic understanding that you are a soul that has incredible ability to prevail over trauma, that that love, as Harry says, prevails over all trauma at all times, at all times. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, please see Harry's website, harryjimlomilomi.com for more information about Harry. And you could visit my website, willowhite.com if you want to sign up for the Monday Night Circle series that started on March 7th. And uh, I almost forgot to mention, I'm doing another class that's on March 20th. And that is a one day class uh, that is a guided exercise to help developing mediums move into an understanding of their spiritual assessment. So you can move forward in understanding the past and understanding the present and how you're wanting to build for the future. So again, you can find more information about uh, Harry's uh, offerings and my offerings on our websites. And you can tune in next week on Wednesday, same time, same place, uh, 10 a.m. And uh, my guest will be Nancy Lombardo. We're gonna be talking about helping the helpers. And I, I can't wait for that show too. I've got such great guests and thank you so much for being on the show today, Harry. It's been beautiful. All right. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha.